I'm going to show you how to turn an ad video into an actual YouTube ad campaign. So I'm going to show you all of the settings I use. I'm going to show you how, the, how to do the targeting. So this is going to be a really good session. Let me share my screen. Hey, Jade. Good to see you. It's been a while. Let me share my screen here. And I do see the chat, by the way. So if anybody feels like interacting... Go for it. Okay, awesome. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn these last two videos, which I have created and uploaded to YouTube, we're gonna turn those videos into actual YouTube ads. So I'm going to go over to my YouTube ads account and I'm going to press this little plus button for a new campaign. And then uh, I get to choose my, my campaign objective here. So the objective is what are you telling the ad algorithm to optimize for? Now, this is a little bit difficult for some people to get their heads around, but this is really, really important. That it, you, you want to tell the algorithm what your goal is, and then you're going to set up tracking code that signals the algorithm when the goal has been met. Right, so if I choose leads, for example, then the goal is to get leads. And so I'm gonna set up my tracking code such that when somebody becomes a lead, then it, my website communicates back to Google Ads, which is the YouTube Ads platform. If you're not familiar, Google Ads is, is owns YouTube Ads, so it's the same platform. But it's gonna communicate that back whenever I get a new lead and uh, the importance of this is that YouTube is going to use that data of who becomes a lead and it's going to use that to optimize in the future. And it's going to start to notice patterns in the sort of people that tend to become leads. And it's going to show my ads to more people like that and get me more leads like that. And it's also going to optimize for what type of people are most likely to become a lead or get me a, get me leads at the lowest cost if I choose leads, right? Whereas if I choose sales, it's gonna do the same thing except it's optimizing for sales. So it's gonna try to get me the sales at the lowest cost. You could do website traffic, which is just clicks. It's gonna try to get me the lowest cost clicks. So which one you wanna use here is is a little bit of an art as well as a science because on the one hand, it would be nice to just optimize for sales because sales is what I ultimately want. But the problem with that is that especially if you have a higher ticket product, then optimizing for sales is not ideal because it takes a long time to get data. Because if you get let's say you, you have to get at least like 50 sales or something for the data to really be useful for the ad algorithm to optimize. Well, if it takes a lot to get a sale, then it's going to be a long time before you can optimize for that. So what I would recommend in that case is that you optimize for leads. Now, on the other hand, if you sell a product, let's say you have a, a front end product that's like $10 or $20 or something like that, then optimizing for sales can be good. That's not a bad idea. And then if you're kind of, if you're, what I'm doing actually with my ads is that I'm getting a lead. And then as soon as somebody becomes a lead, I'm offering them a free thing. And then as soon as they become a lead, then they have the, op the opportunity to buy a low end product that costs a hundred dollars. And then if they buy the low end product for a hundred dollars and they like it, then they might end up being a client and, and paying a lot more than $100. So I could really, I could optimize for either sales or leads. And I'm, to be honest, I'm a little bit torn. So maybe I'll even run one of each and see what kind of performance they both get. I think for now, I'm gonna start with sales. And then I'm going to, okay, so it, it gives me these conversions that are already automatically set up. 
Uh, I don't I don't take phone call leads, so I'm going to remove that. I have purchases as an account default. That's not ideal, but I'm going to leave that for now, and I'm going to go back and revise that later. Because what it a conversion is is basically what it's the signal that you're sending back when something happens. So there is a group of conversions called purchases, and it's, as you can see, it's 12 different actions in my case. So I've got a bunch of different things that can be purchased that I have had, have or have had for sale. And so it's a bunch of different ones. What I like to do as a conversion goal is I like to use one goal for everything that's in my sales process. So in this case, it would be, I would have a conversion goal for a lead so when somebody becomes a lead, that's one. When somebody buys my low-end product, that would be a sale conversion. And then when somebody buys my high-end product, that would be another sale conversion. And so I would like to have a conversion set that have all three of those. But I have to go to the conversion screen and set that up manually. I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm just going to leave it as purchases for now. I'm going to leave it the default, and I will go back to it later. So I'll hit continue and then campaign type. Campaign type for uh, YouTube is always the same. It's always video. They also have this demand gen thing, which has YouTube and Gmail, which I think is kind of silly. I prefer to just do video. And then we'll continue. Okay, now to give it a name, really the point of a name is just to be able to recognize what it's doing at a glance. So I'm going to call it Yes, which is just what I call my YouTube ad service in general. That's my very overarching name for the, the business. And then I'm going to call it Ad conversion, I'll just call it ad conversion because that's my product line. And then I'll call it something for the specific targeting. So whatever I choose as my audience that I'm gonna target, I'm gonna put that in the name. I don't know what that is yet. I still, I'm gonna go do some exploring and figuring that out. So I'm just gonna, I'll just leave it as X for now. And so I'm going to change that X later. So the, the purpose of the campaign name is just so I know at a glance what it is. It's like, okay, so it's my YouTube ad service. It's my ad conversion product and it's my whatever targeting, whatever I choose. And then locations, I'm going to leave it as United States and Canada. If you want to target more countries, you can, if you want to target less, even if you want to target a local area, you can do that, put enter location. You can, uh, enter another location that is, and you can put zip codes, you can put states or provinces, you can put uh, DMAs, you can put cities, there's a whole bunch of different, you can, I think you can even do a, a radius around a zip code. And then languages already set to English, that's good for me because my ad is in English and my landing page is in English and my product is in English. <laughs> And then bid strategy, I always start at maximize conversions and I'm gonna put $5 a day. That's kind of my default. And of course, Google is gonna try to tell me to spend way more, but they, they always want you to spend more. It's like, no matter what you spend, if I say $1,000 a day, it's gonna say, oh, well, maybe you should try spending $2,000 a day. <laughs> it always, take the Google suggestions with a massive grain of salt because they're really just there to make them more money. So I like to start with very small ad budgets because this ad is untested. I don't know if it's going to work. Now, I've gotten pretty good at this. And so more often than not, my ads work the first time. But I'm not the final judge of that. The final judge is the market. It's the people who actually see the ad who will judge whether or not it is compelling to them. And because I can't read their minds, I don't know exactly what they want. 
I do my best to understand what they want, but I don't know that 100%. So I can't guarantee that my ad is going to work. Because of that, I like to basically bet small amounts of money on it. And then if it does not work, then I just shut off the ad and I've only lost a little bit of money. But if it does work, then I raise the budget and spend more and more and more money. Because if I'm putting $1 in and like for every $1 in, I take $2 out. Well, then I want to spend as much as I can, right? Because I'm doubling my money. So I'm going to start small to minimize the risk. And then, and I'm also going to run multiple variations. This is not going to be the only one that I run. And I'm going to run all the variations with exactly the same budget so that I can test them against each other and I can see, okay, this one's performing better than this one. So I'm going to shut off this, this one that's performing relatively badly and I'm going to scale this one that's performing relatively well. Okay, networks. They don't give you a choice anymore. So I'm going to ignore that. Additional settings. You have all eligible, eligible devices. I used to shut off TV screens, but now they, they put a QR code on the TV screen so the person can scan the QR code, which is kind of cool. So I'm actually going to leave that now. Frequency capping is just, I don't want somebody to see the same ad more than three times a day, something like that. You can set the schedule, like what times of day is it showing or what days. I don't care. I'll show it all day, every day. That's fine with me. And then, oh, video enhancements. Absolutely turn these things off. Well, let me see. Maybe definitely the shorter versions of your video, definitely turn that off. Because if you do YouTube ads the way that I do, then you have a script which has all the points that you want to make. And if you give the Google AI permission to just like shorten your, your video and like cut off some of your points, well, that's, that's not good at all. And they, they overestimate the power of their AI greatly in my opinion. So I definitely turn that one off. Now the vertical and square versions, um, that depends. I think that's going to look bad. I think that's going to look, actually, let me show you. I'll just show you what the ad looks like here. Just a second. And the sound sharing doesn't really work on this but you can see what it looks like and you can see the captions. Ad costs taking a big bite out of your profit margins? If so, it might be time to start diversifying your traffic sources. Specifically, if you're not already advertising here on YouTube, chances are you could be getting a significantly better return on ad spend. So if I allow them to turn this into a square, or turn it vertical, it's going to cut off the captions and that's going to look pretty bad. So I'm going to not allow that. I'm going to uncheck that box. And then, okay, so that's my campaign settings. Now, the way that this is organized, the way that YouTube ads is organized is you have three different levels. You have your campaign and then under that campaign, you have ad groups. And then under those ad groups, you have ads. So you can have multiple ad groups per campaign and multiple ads per ad group, but I don't ever do that. For me, it's always one campaign, one ad group, and one ad per, like one ad group per campaign, one ad per ad group. That way that I can, I can just look at the campaign's dashboard at a glance and I can see how everyone is doing. I don't have to drill down into stuff and it just makes things a lot more simple. So because I only have one ad group per campaign, I usually don't name the ad group. I just leave it as whatever default they gave me. Now, I need to set an audience. This is the one of the most important parts is who do I want to show this ad to? And so I'm going to go ahead and add an audience. And I'm going to create a new one for this. 
So a little bit of background. This is an ad that is for essentially for established business owners who are already running ads on some platform other than YouTube and are already having some level of success with those ads. And my pitch is that if you will run ads on YouTube, you're diversifying your traffic sources, you're widening the possible audience that you can reach, plus you are, you're probably gonna get better results from your ads on YouTube than you can on any other platform because YouTube's targeting is so good. Because YouTube is owned by Google, and Google knows what people are searching for on the Google search engine, they know what videos they're watching on YouTube. They know what emails they're reading in Gmail. They know what websites they're visiting in Chrome. They even know like where people are driving because everybody's using the Google's GPS, <laughs> right? So Google knows like everything about everybody, including what they're looking for at this given moment. So my claim is that because of this, I can get better results from YouTube ads than whatever they're getting from Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever they're advertising on right now. So the point is though, that I want to find people who are already somewhat successful business owners and ideally successful business owners that are already in the market for some other ad platform. So I am going to, well, I have one in mind so I can look through they have interest in demographics. So I can say like, see if it's already here somewhere. No, if I say advertising, this is very slow because I'm sharing my screen. Advertising services, right? So I can target people that are already looking for advertising services. And this is something that's already predefined by Google, right? This is already built into their dashboard. Now I can also create a custom segment, which means that I define who I am looking for rather than letting Google define it for me. And that's what I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna create a custom segment. Now I have a bunch of my own custom segments that are already here, but I'm gonna create a new segment and I'm gonna call it Hyros and Segmetrics. So this is, and I can see interests or purchase intentions or people who searched for these on Google. I think I'll do interests and purchase intentions. So Hyros and Segmetrics. Okay, so what these are, if you've never heard of Hyros and or Segmetrics, these are both software services that allow business owners to track the results of their advertising better than the built-in platforms can do. So why I'm using this specifically is because anybody who is interested in either Hyros or Segmetrics is somebody who is already advertising and is already getting results from their advertising, which is exactly the sort of person that I want to target. It's probably just kind of culturally, it's probably people that are into, or that have some kind of online high ticket service, something like that, who tend to be my best customers. So my, Hypothesis is, and, and we'll see how this works, but my hypothesis is that this is going to be a good audience for this particular ad because it's a very similar audience to what I'm looking for. Because I can't, like I can't add people who, like people who are already established business owners who are already running ads, but want to run ads on other platforms. Like that I, that, I couldn't add that. I couldn't just type that in and it would work. Maybe one day with AI, but, but we're not there yet. So this is kind of the closest proxy that I can think of for targeting the best audience. Now I showed you that there's also a target, like a pre-built target for people looking for advertising services. 
I'm going to, I'm going to run an ad to that one as well. I'm going to do both of those. I'm going to test them against each other, but I will go ahead and save my segment and a custom audience. Oh, geez. I already created this. Jeez. <laughs> and I didn't even realize it. Okay. And then no kidding. Okay. Well, maybe then I will just high risk. Look at that. Jeez. I totally forgot that I, I must've created that a long time ago and totally forgot. And I named it exactly the same. Okay. And then interest in detail demographics. That's there's a lot to see there in market means. What are people looking for? Life events is like what's happening to them. Like they just created a business. They just graduated college, et cetera. Detailed demographics. We got parental status, marital status, education, like level of education. Do they own a home or not? Um, are they employed? What kind of employment? Affinity is what kind of stuff are they interested in, right? So are they interested in, in home and garden, for example? And we could go drill down on that. So people who are home decor enthusiasts, I could target those. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave as is, but I'm also going to do a demographic targeting. And so maybe I target age, start at age 25, and then I'm going to target household income. I'm going to say top 10 and top 20% only. I'm going to get rid of unknowns. Now with income, this is an interesting one because the higher levels of income are more desirable to advertise to. So the, the more you target people with higher income, and by the way, these, these are not perfect, right? Google does not know 100% who is in the top 10% of income earners. It's guessing that based on people's online behavior. So if they're visiting sites about yacht clubs and, and polo and, you know, rich people stuff, then they guess that that person is probably pretty affluent and they're, they're guessing that they're high income. It's not perfect. It's just a guess, right? Because anybody like anybody with an internet connection could be looking for country clubs and polo. So it's not hundred percent accurate, but it's better than nothing. And then the top income earners are the, the more desirable to advertise to because obviously they have more money to spend. So <laughs> advertisers in general prefer to advertise to people that are more willing and able to spend money. So what that means is that it's more competitive to, build, to bid for people at the top of the income spectrum. Because it's more competitive to bid for those people, it means that the ads cost more. Now, what that and that's okay, and they don't really cost a lot more, but they cost a little bit more, and that's okay. But the downside, or the the thing to really keep in mind here, is that Google is optimizing your ads for the lowest cost. So, so for for example, I set mine to sales it's going to optimize to get the lowest cost per sale for me. And the, if let's say I was doing leads because that's more instructive sales is, is okay because if somebody buys my thing, then I don't really care what their income is after they already bought the thing. But if let's say I do, I optimize for leads. Well, just, by virtue of the fact that the lower income people tend to be cheaper leads because there's less competition, that means that Google is going to optimize for the cheapest leads. And because the lower income people are generally the cheapest leads, that means it's going to optimize for the lower income people. Now, if my product is something that is geared toward higher income people, then that's a problem. 
if my product is a product that's geared towards lower income people and many products are, then that's, that's great. But you got to keep that in mind. So I'm going to leave that there. I think that's good. Oh, and then I got to give this a name. So let's say Hyros and Segmetrics and say 25 plus and then top 20% income. Let's say age 25 plus. I like to make my names pretty descriptive. So this is the, the custom segment that I'm targeting. This is, and these are the, the two demographic filters that I put on. And I will hit save. Okay, awesome. And so we got it right here. And then this is super, super important. Optimized targeting. Optimized targeting. What that, it sounds nice, but what it really means is that I am giving Google permission to target people who are outside of the targets that I told them to target, right? So, and by the way, these custom segments like Hyros and Segmetrics, this is something that's, it's just kind of a guideline. It's not only gonna target people that are interested in those things, it's gonna use that as a starting point and then figure out from there who tends to be interested and optimize from there. However, this part, age 25 plus and top 20% income, these are specifics. And so I want Google to only, op only advertise to people age 25 plus and only advertise to people in the top 20% of income range. I don't wanna be flexible about that. So, by checking optimized targeting, what I'm doing is I'm saying that they can just basically ignore these, these criteria. These things that I don't, the, the demographic settings that I do not want to be flexible about, I'm saying you can be flexible about it. And what has tended to happen when you do this, if you leave this checked in my experience, is that it basically ignores your criteria completely and and just sends all your ads to whoever's the cheapest, which in this case is generally the bottom end of the income spectrum. So I am absolutely going to leave that unchecked. And in most cases, you should leave this unchecked. There, there are exceptions, but for most cases that, at least in my experience or that, that I work with, generally you wanna leave that unchecked. Okay, and I'm gonna look at advanced settings. And then, okay, there's one that is no longer allowed. For some reason, they have these options that they retired a long time ago that are still, they're still here, but it's just with a message that you can't do it anymore. Just to like rub it in your face <laughs> that they got rid of that option. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually get into creating my ads. So the first thing is I gotta, I gotta paste the link to my video, so. This is going to be big bite. I will get my shareable link. I will paste it here. And so that's the video. Now I have to, and this is a, a, preview of what it looks like. And so I can see what it looks like on a phone, on a computer, on a TV screen. So if it's on a TV screen, it's gonna show the video here and it's gonna put a QR code beside it. So if they're interested in what I have to offer, they can scan the QR code with their phone, which is kind of cool. So if you've ever wanted to be on TV, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Okay, so I need my URL. So that is when somebody clicks on the ad, where do they go? So I'm going to go over here and grab that from my Kartra, which is what I use for pretty much all of my pages and CRM and all my marketing stuff, including this webinar that you're watching right now, this presentation I do over Kartra. So it is... I have a lot of pages here. So it's this one, add conversion. 
Oh no, this one, it's add conversion ST, which is split test. So I created two versions of the page and I'll show you what it looks like real quick. So dead simple. I found the simpler the landing page, the better it works. Swipe my simple three-step SOP to convert any profitable ad into an even better performing YouTube ad in less than a day. Get higher ROAS, expand your reach, and diversify your traffic sources. Pick up your copy, click on that, and fill out a form, and that's it. So I'm going to leave that up here. And actually, no, I'm not going to leave it up here because that was a split test link. I'm going to paste that link right here. Make sure that HTTPS worked. Good, good. That's correct. For my call to action, I'm just, I usually just default to learn more. And then headline. And then, oh, it gives me some suggestions here. These are probably AI generated. Yeah, YouTube ads conversion SOP. I actually like that. Maybe I put free. Hmm. Doesn't like it, it's too many letters. You see the number of letters you're allowed down here, the 26 out of 30. So I could put four more letters, but free space is five. So that's too much. And Edward, I use Kartra. I use Kartra to let me actually, let me give you a link to that, which is my affiliate link. So if I can figure out how to chrisshoot.com slash Kartra. There you go. I put it as a sticky message, so it should show up at the top. If anybody signs up using that link, you'll get a free trial for the first month. And then after the first month, if you decide to continue, then I will get a little percentage of your, your payment because I'm an affiliate. So yeah, so I, I really, really like that program. I've been using it for years and it does like everything marketing. It hosts your pages, it, you can send mass emails, it hosts your email list, you can have automatic emails, you can host videos, you can have surveys in there, you can run webinars, it's like everything all in one platform. I think it's amazing. Okay, so for a long headline, that's gonna be, for different formats. So it's gonna be, I'm gonna say like convert any ad on any, or let's just say any ad into a YouTube ad, or let's say any working ad, any, I'll just leave it as any ad, into a YouTube ad that gets even better performance or that let's say performs better. Okay. And then I like to go over here to see what that looks like. If I look at different formats, Okay, so this is like a discovery ad. So there's there's these in-stream ads, which are probably the ones that you're most used to when you click on a video that you wanna watch on YouTube. And before you watch the video or in the middle of the video, another video comes up that's an ad and after five seconds, you can hit skip. That's called an in-stream ad. That's, that's the kind of the, the most important one. And that's what you're seeing right here in this preview. But you can also do a, what's called a discovery ad, which is this one where the person sees it like a suggested video and they can click on it if they want to. So I usually don't put a whole lot of thought into this. Like I'm not gonna give it a thumbnail, even though I could. Although actually this, the, the just 
freeze screen that it took is actually a pretty decent thumbnail. <laughs> so just got lucky on that one. But I usually, I put very little thought into this. And so the long headline is the headline that it shows in that discovery ad. Or let's say, no, that's fine. I'm going to leave as is. If you make it, like you can make it quite a bit longer, but then it'll cut it off. So this is just about as long as I can make it without it cutting off here. And then I also, I can put a description. And let me see what that looks like. Okay, and so that co that's the small te text that goes under that headline and does not show up in the in this in-stream ad. It only shows up in this discovery ad. So I'm going to say download the SOP. Let's say download, or not download, let's just say get my SOP for free. Now, one little quirk of Google Ads is that you can't capitalize things. Oh, and in fact, this is gonna get me in trouble. So I'm gonna say convert any ad. because it doesn't like capitalized words. And SOP technically isn't a word, it is an acronym, but it's probably gonna flag it and it's gonna think it's a capitalized word. So my theory here is that if I put periods after the letters, then it will recognize that it's an acronym and not a word, but it might reject that. I'm not entirely sure, we'll see. But anyway, this is what it looks like. This is convert any ad into a YouTube ad that performs even better, get my SOP for free. And this is what it looks like in stream, which is more important to me. And I actually kind of made a little mistake here in that I put the captions such that the skip ad button covers them up which is unfortunate, but it's not a big enough problem that I think I need to change it. So let me see what else do we have here. Let's look on the computer. If you watch on the computer, oh, then it's totally covered up. Yeah, that, that was an oversight on my part. I should have thought of that. I should have put that caption in a better place. And maybe I will go back and change that later, but for now I'm not going to. That looks fine. Yeah, that one's covering up. And on the TV, there's nothing covering it up. Cool, okay. Okay, so it is what it is. I've been doing this for years and I still make mistakes like that. So there's, there's a lot to juggle. Anyway, so I think that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to hit create campaign. And okay, congratulations, your campaign is ready. And continue to overview. And it's going to take a few, usually a few hours for them to decide whether or not to approve it. So it's currently status pending under review. So after a few hours, or it's, it's a little bit late now, so maybe it'll be tomorrow, they're going to either approve it or deny it. If they deny it, they'll tell me why they have, they're, they're kind of picky about their policies. And if they, I mean, the only reason that they might deny it is those capitalized SOP. If that's the case, then I'll go and change that to something else. And then I will, I will just resubmit it for approval and, and chances are they'll approve it that time. 
so that's that's it like that's everything to setting up an ad campaign and what i'm going to do i told you that i'm not just going to run this one ad campaign i'm going to run a variety of different variations to test and i i created two videos by the way this is only one of my two videos so i'm going to run two videos times like maybe three different targeting options each right so one video times three targeting options is three different ad campaigns. And then the second video times three targeting ad, three targeting options is another three ad campaigns. So it'll be a total of six ad campaigns. I'm gonna run them all with small budgets and I'm gonna see which ones perform the best. So I'm not going to set up all of the other ad campaigns for you here because it would be kind of redundant. But basically the over, like the way that I do it is rather than starting from scratch, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this ad campaign. I'll just copy and paste it. And then the copy that I just made, I will go and only change the targeting, leave everything else exactly the same, right? So that way it's a lot less work on my part. All I have to do is change that one setting instead of having to go and do this from scratch and go through all of the settings that I just showed you. So that's it, that's it for tonight. I appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate you guys listening. And I will see you all next week. We might, we might take a look at the analytics on these. Or, yeah, that's, that's probably what we'll do next week. I haven't decided for sure yet, but you should show up to find out. I'll leave, leave a little bit of element of surprise here, but that's most likely what we're going to do next week. So thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. And I will see you all next week.